Hello, my name is Peter Cairns. I'm a director at Scotland The Big Picture. and We're a non-profit that works with a diverse range of people to make rewilding happen at many different levels across Scotland. So what is rewilding? Well, before I answer that, we need to briefly visit the story of dewilding. Now, there's no doubt that Scotland is a land of incredible shape and form, beauty and drama, home to some spectacular wildlife that in many cases has staged a remarkable comeback, like the osprey, like the pine martin, like the recently reintroduced beaver. But this apparent wealth of life belies a hidden reality. This is the Kerrang on the Isle of Skye. For most people, this landscape symbolises what Scotland looks like, what they think Scotland should look like. And although again, the drama is undeniable, geological wonders such as the Kerrang are for the most part surrounded by ecological deserts, land that has been stripped of its natural woodlands and therefore the many species that would once have thrived here. Scotland has lost all its large carnivores and most of its large herbivores. It's one of the least wooded countries in Europe. 80% of its peatlands are degraded and 50% of its rivers are in poor health. The latest State of Nature report revealed that Britain has become one of the most nature depleted countries in the world. 25% of Scotland's land area is dedicated to either open hill deer stalking or driven grouse shooting. These ecological vacuums support not only fewer species than they once did, than they could again, but throughout the Highlands in particular, fewer people. Rewilding is about returning abundance and diversity of life to Scotland's damaged and degraded ecosystems for nature, for climate and for people. So how do we make rewilding happen? Well, imagine for a moment that you're a gamekeeper. Your father and your grandfather were gamekeepers. Imagine that until recently, your work was considered to be a public service, integral to rural communities. Now imagine someone comes along and questions your life's work, undermines a landscape that you have helped shape, a landscape that provides you with a sense of purpose and belonging. Imagine how you'd feel if all of a sudden social media was awash with derogatory comments belittling your intellectual capacity. Nobody is going to react well to that. Most people will fight back with whatever tools they have at their disposal. And once that battle begins, it's hard to stop. The shouting gets louder, the language more divisive. And eventually, so fueled with hatred for the perceived enemy, the winning of the war becomes more important than the reason the war began. The future of grouse moors is about social change. It's not a scientific debate over hen harriers and grouse. It's a clash of cultural beliefs and deep-seated values. Some gamekeepers and land managers break the law and nobody is denying that that needs a firm hand. But for the majority, they're motivated by the need to provide for their families and to manage the land in a way that they believe to be right. And if we want to change those motivations, we first of all need to understand them. And we need to offer an alternative that resonates with different people's values. No amount of shouting or hurling insults is going to affect that change. Scotland the Big Picture wants to see these magnificent birds in Scotland's uplands as much as anyone. But we need to be much cannier. I've heard it said many times that the carrot is useless and we need a bigger stick. People insist that we've tried talking to the other side and they won't listen. Well, I can assure you that the other side says pretty much the same. I understand that people get angry about dead raptors. I get angry, but we need to bottle that anger and ask ourselves how best to affect change. Because change is at the heart of this. And changing your thinking, taking on an, an alien set of principles, it isn't easy. People are weighed down by belief systems that form throughout their lives. Beliefs shaped by their parents, their education, their peer groups, even their religious persuasions. But change is possible. This is 
Glenfeshi in the western Cairngorms, part of wild lands ground, and shows a landscape in recovery. After centuries of intense management for deer stalking and grouse shooting, this landscape is being allowed to breathe, to start to govern itself. Ten years ago, there were no hen harriers on wild land. This year, there were seven pairs. Ten years ago, there were two golden eagle territories. Now there are five. Change is possible. Change can be seen in Glen Affric, in Craigmeggie, at Allerdale in Sutherland, at Ben A in Wester Ross. None of these landscapes will transform overnight, but they're on a rewilding journey, a journey of change. When I look back over the last 30 years, there's been an incredible change in our relationship with nature. Not all of it is positive, but enough of it is to make me believe that we can all learn to see the big picture. Scotland could become a world leader in restoring its broken ecosystems, but that is as much about philosophical change as it is physical change. I believe that change is coming, but we have to avoid the temptation of telling people how to live their lives. There's a nice quote by Buckminster Fuller, which I think gives us a nice steer. You never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. The rewilding journey is an exciting one. If you'd like to join us, we'd be delighted to have you on board. Have a great Hen Harrier Day.